Hello there, and welcome to this short film portraying railways in transition at Pendon. This weekend ran over the 3rd and 4th of December 2022, and the event portrays how steam traction looked in the middle to late 1950s. We have moved the clock forward about 25 years from the Pendon period of the 1930s, when the infrastructure would have been largely unchanged, with many stations still sporting the livery of the old company. We have a number of trains from that period running alongside our usual fleet of Great Western stock, and it is these new trains that we will now show you in this film. First up on the Up Bristol, we see the Red Dragon, a Premier Express train introduced in 1951, running between Swansea and Paddington, and conveying through coaches from Carmarthen. The formation is as close as we can get it, and the engine, number 70017 Arrow, is a converted Hornby Britannia. This and the stock were all provided by Timara Easter. These were the first of the British Railway standard engines, and most ex-Great Western engine men didn't take kindly to an engine not designed at Swindon. However, Canton men at Cardiff were more open-minded and managed to get excellent results from these impressive engines, which were always kept in immaculate condition. Here on the Up Oxford, we now see an inter-regional working with a Midland region XLMS Black 5, number 45021. Designed by William Stanier, a good deal of Great Western influence can be seen in the loco given his early training at Swindon. This loco and the coaching stock was kindly provided by Pete Rigby. Following on the Down Oxford, this is a semi-fast passenger train hauled by number 1013, County of Dorset. These engines were the last express passenger engines built for the Great Western Railway, designed by Frederick Hawksworth. They sported a number of unique features, slab-sided tenders, straight splashes and nameplates, and a boiler pressed to £280 per square inch. This was later downgraded to £250 per square inch, and the engines eventually found favour on the hilly main lines of Cornwall. Our engine is largely scratch built by Steve Williams, and the coaching stock is Hornby Hawksworth stock. Following hard on its heels on the down Bristol, we have a parcels working headed by the controversial and unsuccessful gas turbine locomotive number 18,000 commonly referred to as Kerosene Castle. Ordered by the Great Western in 1946 from Brown Bovary in Switzerland, the loco never fulfilled expectations, proving expensive to run and maintain. Following various fires, it was withdrawn, but the shell can still be seen preserved at Didcot Railway Centre. The model is by Helgen and was kindly provided by Chris Massey. The rolling stock and on the next train uh, were provided by other volunteers at Pendon. Coming along the down Bristol and pausing momentarily in the station, we have a two-car DMU unit, a Class 108. In its characteristic green livery with speed whiskers, it looks fine as it disappears into the distance. Coming along the down Oxford, we have a train of loaded coal wagons from the Nottinghamshire coal fields. It will have come down the old GC main line and then via Banbury. The engine, a Buckman conversion, is a WD Austerity 280 number 90033 which were introduced as cheap, mass-produced engines in 1944, designed by Robin Riddles. Many were sent to France shortly after D-Day, but most were eventually repatriated and gave long and productive service on British railways well beyond their intended design life. The last train we see on the main line is a Hawksworth 94XX pannier tank running light engine. These are the tank engine version of the Collet Goods and were powerful modern engines but with very short service lives. It is presumed to be running back to Swindon for minor repairs. On the Midland and South Western Junction Railway, we see a short pickup goods hauled by a Collet Goods engine, Loco 2256. This is from a Finney kit, and the prototypes were built to replace ageing Ding Goods engines. They prove versatile, powerful, and reliable. We hope you have enjoyed this short video. We have a lot more from Pendon to share with you. Click on the link below to access some of our hidden gems and do subscribe to our YouTube channel which we update regularly.